So welcome back friends. So after what, seven days, it's finally stopped raining and we can get outside and do some things. So one good thing came out of the rain is that the lower, all of the ponds are all filled up, the creeks are all, <laughs> all flowing and uh, we can go down and see how our dam and our Jack's Bridge uh, is surviving. I haven't been down there, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, well, it'll be fun to see some water underneath of it. So um, it's just today's going to be kind of a, uh, a day in the life around the homestead. Uh, I've, I've been spending a lot of time getting ready for winter, uh, getting all, everything brought in under cover. So I'll just bring you along today and uh, you guys can hang out and uh, just kind of see what's going on. So I was kind of anticipating snow this week, but it looks like it's pushed off for another week or 10 days, maybe even. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'll, we'll take off the snow removing equipment put the bucket on and, and we'll take the tractor down there. I've got some other little things I need to do. Um, but uh, also tire chains. I, I had a heck of a time putting tire chains on last year because of those huge spring tensioners. Uh, I've got, a, I found a tool, a couple of you recommended it to me from a, there's a guy that sells snow chains for everything online. And it's like a, um, it's a, a binder, a chain binder that he's got these special hooks in it. So I ordered one, it was only like $18 and that's coming. So as soon as that comes, we'll throw the chains on because it's getting kind of muddy around here. We sure could use them. So I've got everything brought in, uh, everything under cover this year. The sawmills all broke down and the, I'll take you down. I'll show you the lower barn. All of the summertime implements, mowers and things that I don't use during the winter, I have down in the big barn. And then uh, the stuff that I'm going to need to get to this wind, like the forks and the bucket and the snow plow and the blade, will all gain shop. Always, always, always put your pins back in <laughs> your keepers. They'll go away if you don't. It really is something. The man that invented this uh, three-point system, what, probably a oh, hundred years ago, and still it's the standard that we still use today and works so amazingly well. <laughs> Can put the pins back in there, don't forget that. Since there is no particular theme today, I can just talk about anything I want to, which is kind of fun. Uh, so a lot of people have been asking, you've noticed in videos, what is this thing I've been packing around? Well, uh, boy, I, fit, I video and film and edit and I do everything by myself. And um, I've switched up my cameras. I was, I was using some prosumer cameras and they just couldn't hold up to the daily abuse uh, that I put on cameras and having them outside. So I upgraded to a professional camera that was more weather resistant, waterproof. I'm shooting a, a Canon 5D Mark IV. Problem is, is it doesn't have a forward facing screen. So I, without a cameraman, I, I can't really control the focus. I had no idea what was going on. And so I got to looking around trying to figure out how, what the solution is to this. And I didn't want a big monitor and all that hanging on there. I wanted to be able to control the camera remotely. And, and it, the Canon has a really cool um, uh, app for the iPhone. And so what I, what I basically did is I built this little tiny director's rig. So this is my iPhone that clamps into a, a really nice high quality billet aluminum clamp on a pro midi gear base with a handle. And then I've got a backup anchor battery that runs up there all, all the time. So the phone stays on and I can keep it charged all the time. So what I essentially have right here is, is an entire remote control for my camera. So before I start shooting, 
Um, I can make sure that I'm in the frame here. I can see I'm in the center. I can change the aperture. I can change the f-stop. I can change the focusing. I can, I can change the ISO, the white balance, all of those things. I can start and stop. It has just made everything so nice, but it just especially to know what's going on. Even from the tractor, I can take it in the tractor and all that. So, so this is what this is. So if you see me pack it around, this is my, uh, my mini director's monitor that controls my whole camera. So it's like a little cameraman uh, with a handle on it. All right, here we go. Let's go down and uh, check out the dam and the bridge. We'll bring our little drone friend. Let's see what we can see. So before we head down there in person, let's just send the Mavic down and kind of see what's going on with all of this rain. We should have all of the all of the ponds full. There's the Christmas bridge. Let's see how close we can get down there. Easy now. Looks like we've got water flowing pretty good there. Let's head upstream. Now upstream, of course, we have the the duck pond here. That's not a whole lot of water in there. Not like there will be, but it's definitely getting to be more and more. So one of the things um, uh, that we've been trying to do of course is uh hold the hold the water on the land as long as possible this pasture out here in front of you you can see is where we've planted uh um nearly almost 2000 trees in the first year we had a 90% mortality rate because it was just so dry um granted there was a bit of a drought uh but uh, that was a pretty high kill off and i think a lot of it has to do with with all of the water just rushing off the property. You can see here, we've been in the process of holding this water, meaning making natural dams, like beaver dams, for example, uh, that we can, um, the water can stay up here longer and help with those trees. So we'll go up here and take a look at the first one. Yes, yeah, so nice to see. See, it's kind of backing up. Well, here's something I wanted to show you. So this is a uh, one of our targets. This is one of the new targets I put up. Is that the little one? Yes, little one right there. I think it's a five inch target and it's at uh, 525 yards. Darken that up a bit. 525 yards. Brian and I were getting on it uh, the other night we were shooting. A f I think it's five inch. Yeah, five inch target at 500 yards. That's pretty good. That's it's just amazing. What a great caliber that Creedmoor is. So let's go take a look at our dam. See the ditching there. We've got that all seeded, but the water is uh, rather than just really eroding away uh, like it was before, and the ditches falling off and, and getting a lot of dirt and silt into the water. It is now. It's not. Looks a lot better. So we can't put hard dams in. That's actually um, against the law. But we can put woven dams in like this that have, uh, they're just using natural foliage. That's one that one of them that da Jack and I built. So here we can see we have a nice, nice uh, banks on there. Nicely sloped up. That looks really good. Looks really good. If we go to the other side, let's see how much, how much water is holding. A lot easier to fly down there, isn't it? There we can see. Not a whole lot. You can see there's a little bit of a, definitely a little bit of a elevation difference. But as we, uh, as this silts up and natural, you know, leaves and grass and 
debris and silt and stuff will just continue to, you know, we just got it started, just got the ball rolling, then nature, nature will take over it, and that's going to back this water up and hold it It'll, as it just filters and kind of sifts through um, these dams. All right, well, I'm going to bring the drone back here, if you're not dizzy enough yet, and then we'll uh, take the tractor down and uh, go see how the bridge how the bridge is holding up. That water is backing up a little bit here. This might be a little too soft. I might just give this a bit of a wide berth. Let's uh, come in here slow. That's getting a little too soft right there. I'm definitely leaving some marks. Oh, get out while the getting's good. Okay, so that's not gonna work. <laughs> I had built, actually built the road over on the other side over here. Let's see how that looks over there. Yeah, it looks hard. Okay, so let's let's go around and uh, come in the other way rather than get stuck. No reason to get stuck. Take an extra couple minutes and come in in a different direction. So this is very exciting. I've never been able to cross the or cross down here into this portion of the property because of the uh, uh, because of the, the the water in the winter time. Now, <laughs> that feels pretty good to be able to do that. It opens up a whole other a whole other uh, dimension here for us. We'll be planting in the spring, we'll be planting some um, um, aspen, and we're going to try to uh, to plant some birch and cedars in here, and then maybe over the next 20 years or so, we can have uh, have everything much more lush and, and like it used to be. Uh, this was has been used, this land here, for the last, oh goodness, 150 years or so, 120 years maybe, uh, for growing dry wheat. And, and, and crops and so we are uh, takes a long time to try to put it back we're putting it back into timber and forestry so but we do what we can a little bit at a time but this is very pleasing to see uh, starting to change and everything starting to work out so it's pretty nice I completely forgot I had these timbers stored these leftover timbers down here I am gonna have to throw the forks on and come down and get these guys are going to get ruined having all these trees around here it is awfully hard on drones I have a literal drone graveyard from all the crashes sad thing is, is this is the first time out I've tried these uh, DJI has got these new propellers that are uh, quieter they is the first time I fl I've flown them uh, they're they're much quieter and they're um, the, the drone flies better with them. It seems like it's it's a little less squirrely and a little more, just a little calmer, easier to fly. And I I, flew, I didn't have it going for 10 minutes and I flew one into a tree branch and broke the tip off of it. So I'm gonna have to put the old ones back on. All right, that's probably, we're probably done with that today. I finally figured out a way to carry my camera safely in the tractor. I've, I tried to hold it on my lap and flying the drone and all that didn't work. So that there's these uh, Manfrotto makes these really nice kind of uh, these clamps. They'll clamp onto about anything. Why is that still recording? And I just put an Acra Swiss. This is the same type of mount that I mount on all my tripods and everything. And I just clamp that on there. And man, that is, that's the way to go. It's rock solid. And I don't have to worry about banging around and getting damaged. 
So this dam, this is the first one that we did. This is the one we broke the window on the tractor. It's holding up really good. It's probably about, uh, about eight inches of difference between the high side and the low side. And that's just gonna increase. It's gonna be really nice to get that water backed up here and, and see what happens in the next spring or two. My eyes are so bleary. Something that, you know, it was interesting. My mom told me that she uh, uh, has, well, she wore glasses and contacts most <clears throat> for a long time. I don't remember when she started, I think pretty early. And I was the same way. I think I had my first pair of glasses when I was about 10 or so. And over the years, my, my eyes have continued to get worse and worse and worse as the in prescription increases. So I've, when I first started wearing contacts, I think the correction was uh, like a 1.5 or what, no, 1.25. And now I'm up to four and every couple of years or so, it just increases and increases. My mom told me that she wearing contacts uh, and her eyesight and glasses and her eyesight has been getting better. And I, you know, I've always believed that. I, I think that just like a muscle, you know, if a muscle, if it's not used, it, it actually goes into is it atrophy, is that the right word? And it becomes weaker and weaker. And when we uh, make corrections with our eyes, um, it, they just become lazy. They rely upon that, uh, upon that uh, glass or contact to do all the work for them. And it's really interesting. So I started uh, a week ago, I started wearing one contact lens in my right hand side, which I have 20-20 vision in that. And then my left eye, I have uh, almost legally blind. Like I could not drive without glasses or contacts. And the interesting thing is I'm going to do it for a month and see if my, if my um, vision doesn't get better. The thing that I've noticed that's so fascinating is that my eye, my left eye at the end of the day that's not being corrected, just is aching like a sore muscle uh, as it's trying to, to deal with um, you know, bringing everything into focus. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's exciting to see. I, want, I've, I wonder if if uh, glasses and contacts, if, if it haven't just become such a crutch um, that there's got to be a better way. Because as I'm, I'm getting so aggravated not being able to see um, detail work when I'm working in the wood shop and shooting rifles. And it's, it just seems like it's always a problem and I'm juggling multiple pairs of glasses or reading glasses and all that. So I'll report back to you on that if that works. We'll see how much better my vision has gotten in, in uh, four weeks. Uh, by not correcting it. I, I think it's gonna work. Today really feels like winter. It's about 31 degrees and cold and it's supposed to have some snow coming soon. So I wanted to take you up, I'll show you the big barn. I've got, finally got that all organized uh, and all the equipment brought in. And then I thought, you know, maybe we should might do some mowing today. Would it's dried out enough and it's something I put off. I didn't get to this spring or this fall. See if we can spin around here and go back across the bridge without getting stuck. It's pretty dry on this side. Looks okay. I never get tired of crossing the bridge. It's, I can only, the sense of satisfaction from building it is really great. I can only imagine what it must have been like for the, those guys that, you know, do like amazing bridges like the Golden Gate Bridge or huge, those huge projects. So I'll show you the big barn here. We kind of got it all switched over and turned it into an implement shed uh, to keep everything in. And uh, we're coming in the side now instead of the ends. Or we can, we can come in both. So this was a couple day project here. <laughs> we took all the siding off here and then opened this up into multiple bays. So, uh, We've got, I wanted to get all of the equipment and everything out of the, out of the snow. Certainly didn't want it uh, to be out and getting rained on and all that. So uh, this bay right here, we left one open there for the van. I'm still trying to get rid of the van. I keep having buyers, but no one wants to come out and buy it. <laughs> but uh, this is for the trailers. So I got the trailers backed in here. And then we got um, the six way and then the rototiller and the post hole digger and the backhoe. Back I tried to organize things in a way that they were, uh, we could kind of get them out as we needed them. Uh, we've got the, the Lucas Mill uh, stowed here and the power head. And uh, Brian and I had a couple days just servicing everything, getting everything greased and oil oil changes and all the maintenance of it. We got the fire skid there. And 
uh, the flex wing mower. This, I think what I'll do is pull this out. I probably should have put the, the brush hog in first and then that one, but we'll move some things around here. Get this hooked up and uh, we'll do a little mowing today. <laughs> 